Hello, this is Amjad Al Mandilawi from Baghdad, Iraq, showing in this presentation some points on angiography and interpretation. This is a fluorosave for engagement of the left coronary artery. It shows a left-sided aortic arch. This is the usual, and this is what we see in most of patients. In rare cases, the aortic arch is right-sided. The incidence is around 0.1%. Engagement of the coronaries is as usual. The operator may think that he has entered the IVC, but the loop in the aortic arch and the pressure waveform indicate arterial position. Engagement of the left coronary artery through femoral approach using a Jetkin left catheter. <clears throat> if the right catheter was chosen, as in most of the cases, the catheter knows its course. So after flushing the catheter, just push downward, even if the tip does not point to the left coronary. The catheter knows its way. When the catheter is manipulated and rotated, while still in the ascending aorta, its direction is going to change and engagement will be difficult, as shown in this case. In most of the cases, a Jetkin 4, Jetkin left 4, is optimal to engage the left coronary artery from femoral approach. The diagram shows a normal fit of JL4 to the left coronary artery. When the same catheter is used in radial approach, it appears to be large and the tip points downward. Engagement and angiography will not be optimal. That's why downsizing to JL 3.5 is needed for, for right radial approach. And this is usually optimal as shown in this fluorosave. When the catheter is small, whether from femoral or radial, it will sit at the base of the aorta instead of the opposite aortic wall, and the tip will point upward, and angio will not be optimal. In this case, a larger catheter is better. Here we can see that the catheter is small relative to the aorta. One way to deal with this situation is to push it deep and do counterclockwise rotation. As shown in this case, you can engage, but still the NGO will not be optimal. This is a epicranial view of the same case showing the LID. A larger catheter was taken and it engaged the left coronary in a better way. As seen here, with comparison of both angio, the left one shows the angiography with a small catheter, where the right one shows the optimal size larger catheter with optimal angiography. Orthogonal views are important, and it's important to have multiple views and projections to assess coronaries. This is because coronary angio shows the silhouette of the arteries, and we have to reconstruct the image in a 3D image in our mind. So if you have an eccentric lesion, like shown here in this diagram, then in one projection, like in B, it shows only a 10% stenosis, while an orthogonal projection, it shows the real significance of the lesion, as is shown in plane A, the 10% stenosis change into 75% stenosis. Not only that, it may identify the nature of the lesion itself. This is alloy view of the right coronary artery. It shows a round-like lesion and haziness in this area in the proximal RCA. It looks like a fling defect. Now we need another projection to identify this. So an orthogonal 
RIO projection was taken, and it shows that the lesion is actually a critical stenosis. This is another example. AP codal view shows the left circumflex with a critical lesion in a large OM. Look at, look at the proximal circ. It looks okay, although one can identify some haziness. The orthogonal view here is the LIO projection. We can see a stenosis in the proximal circ that was not seen in the AP codal view, although it's not a critical. Orthogonal views are useful also in PCI. This is AP cranial view, shows a totally occluded LID. Wire passed and balloon inflated. The balloon seems okay and well inflated, but there is some calcification. An RIO-codal view, we can see here an indentation of the balloon. This means that the lesion is not well prepared and higher pressure inflation is needed which was partially achieved in this view. Complete opacification of the artery is important to avoid misinterpretation of lesions. This left-sided video, there seems to be a filling defect in the RCA at the mid part, at the mid part stent. Actually, this was due to streaming of the dye. In the right-sided video, proper opacification of the artery done and showed that the artery is clear without falling defect. Deep engagement may miss the osseum of the coronary, whether it be the right or the left. Here the catheter is deeply engaged and the osseum of the RCA is not shown. The catheter was pulled back and showed an osteal lesion. In most of the osteal lesions, you have to make sure that it's not a spasm, especially when there is no calcification as in this case. So nitroglycerin is important to differentiate a spasm from lesion. Here nitroglycerin was given and the catheter was pulled back further. The stenosis appears to be less critical than the previous angio, but there still appear to be a lesion. So if you are in doubt, wait more and do a non-selective angio as shown here. This is the same case, but the RCA appears to be completely normal. This is an LIO view of the RCA. It was considered a non-dominant RCA. When you see that, make sure that the PDA is arising from somewhere else, usually the dominant cerc, or is totally occluded. If not found, then you have to look for it. Look for the proper RCA. This is the same case where angiography was done properly, the catheter was pulled back, and the complete opacification of the RCA was seen. Oftentimes, the RCA is deeply engaged and the catheter passes into the coronal branch. The coronal branch supplies a sensitive RVOT. We see in the view the catheter has, has occluded the coronal branch. We can see myocardial blush and dye remaining in the arteries and capillaries without being flushed by the bloodstream. This caused ischemia and ended up with VF. And this concludes our remarks for the angiography and thank you.